Dumela, welcome back to Sona Class. <laughs> As a general, we are going to do a reaction. Today we are going to do a reaction. Uh, as you know, or if you are somebody that is interested in uh, Botswana, which I hope you are, uh, you will know that Botswana is going to the elections. Uh, when is it? When is it? Just in a few days, okay? Uh, on the 30th. Is it 30th or 31st? I think it's the 30th. Uh, today's the 29th. Is it tomorrow? Somewhere there. And uh, as you can know, as, as you know, elections, <laughs> democracy <laughs> operates on a different level. Okay, so Botswana is no exception. When you go to Botswana around this time, around this time you will see that emotions are high. Uh, there's like a lot of noise, a lot of loudspeakers, people campaigning in the middle, in the wee hours of the morning, in the middle of the night and stuff like that. So it's kind of happening right now. Everybody trying to like make sure that they win that vote. Uh, I guess it's just like what's happening right now in America. Uh, yeah, man, we don't sleep in America because, I mean, thankfully they don't do loudspeakers like how they do it in Botswana. They only use like... TV, social media, lots and lots of like letters that they are sending, lots and lots of letters. Like, thankfully, I am not an American citizen, so they don't come directly to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Botswana is going to the elections, um, and um, let's see what the news, uh, international news, are saying about it. Okay, so let's go. By the way, if you are here for the first time, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Too. And for our last story, let's move to Botswana, a diamond-rich country in southern Africa that is set to hold general elections on the 30th of October. The incumbent president, Mokwetsi Masisi, is seeking a second term, which will extend his uh, Botswana Democratic Party, or the BDP's, 58 years in power. Under the BDP's rule, Botswana has gained the reputation of one of the most stable and prosperous democracies in Africa. But this time around, the party is expected to face its biggest competition yet. The opposition has been alleging vote rigging ahead of the elections. Over the weekend, several opposition activists took to the streets of the capital of Gaborone, and they were planning to march to Zimbabwe's uh, embassy with a petition. The petition voiced concerns that the neighboring Zimbabwe is conspiring to help Botswana's ruling party extend its hold on power. But the protesters could not reach the destination. They were blocked by guns, batons and shields wielding police. <laughs> just, it's just I love I love listening to the international news when they report on uh things of this nature. They make it seem like your it was <laughs> It's how she said they, were, they didn't reach there. They were conspiring to help Botswana's ruling party extend its hold on power. Yeah. But the protesters could not reach the destination. They were blocked by guns, batons and shields. <laughs> yeah, it's just how they say it, man. It's bad. It was bad. Guns, buttons and shields. Yeah, obviously in Botswana, strikes are not encouraged. Uh, strikes are not encouraged. Um, and especially, if, I guess, the it's, it's hard to control people. And their intention was to go to the Zimbabwe embassy to, like, I don't know, just, like, protest. But it's not going to be just, like, a peaceful protest. Because uh, once somebody do something, then the whole crowd just follow uh, the main and then it's just kind of like uh, now you ha you are triggering uh, international relations you know what I mean so anyway yeah I do feel like maybe the the opposition party have been crying about like transparency and also uh, the friendship between Masisi and Manangagwa also like maybe that's a trigger I don't know so so far I mean I cannot deny or confirm uh, all these allegations I'm just here to enjoy the news so if you are going to Botswana just know that uh, there's going to be lots of like little tiny strikes here and there but don't worry the Botswana police do not play games like also just as a warning 
if you see that there's like a commotion going there, going on, and there's a foreigner, don't get any close because like the 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 Botswana police uh, or the Botswana security, they might not know who you are in the moment, and you might find yourself in the middle of a hot soup. Okay, building anyway. police who push them back. The BDP and Zimbabwe's government have denied the allegations. Before getting into more details, let us tell you who are the rivals fighting this election. Now, number one is the 63-year-old Mokhwitsi Masisi. He is the incumbent president who belongs to the BDP. He has been the president since 2018, when he ascended to the post after serving as vice president. He is a former school teacher who worked for UNICEF before entering politics. His report card so far has been mixed. He gained support in his first term for negotiating a new sales deal with the world's largest diamond firm called De Beers. The deal is expected to give the country a bigger share of its diamond wealth. But he has received flack by the opposition, who has blamed him for not doing enough for the economy. Now, during his term, Botswana witnessed high unemployment and lower growth. He has also received a political setback over his fallout with Ian Kama, the ex-president under whom he served as the vice president. Now, Kama accuses him of authoritarianism and is backing the opposition. Now, moving on to the second candidate, Mefato Riatile. Now, the 57-year-old is the leader of the Botswana Patriotic Front. This is the same party which is backed by the ex-president, Ian Kama. Uh, one Sitswana lesson here, like she, the name, the, the name that she said, she said, me, me I know when you're speaking English, the PH always sounds like F. But in Sitswana, you it sounds like how it looks, if that makes sense. So you're going to say, me pato. PH. Remember, if you, if like I'm teaching Sitswana also in this channel, so if you are interested in learning or how all this alphabet sound, uh, there's like a video down below. Maybe I should leave a link of it just in case. It's me pato reatile. Me pato reatile, not me pato reatile. I know it's, yeah, that's the, that's the other thing with the uh, Sitswana name. Sometimes they are just kind of you just see, as, as an uh, English speaker, you just see, like, some English words in there, and then you can say tile, real tile. Anyway, she didn't say it. She didn't make that mistake. Okay. After he fell out with the incumbent Mokwitsi Masisi. Now, Reatile is a close ally of Karma, but his party received only 4% of the votes in the last elections. The third candidate is Duma Boko. He is a 54-year-old lawyer and the leader of the left-wing Umbrella for Democratic Change, the UDC. And that's the other thing about, about um, Botswana. There is no left-wing or right-wing. Like, they, they are trying to put all this, like, Western uh, ideology kind of a thing in the, in the mix. But in Botswana, there is no such thing. Like, he is both. He is, uh, he is like, he believes in conservative stuff and also believes in progressive stuff, right? Yeah. So there is no left wing or right wing in Botswana, but I'm interested to see why are they saying he's left wing. International media. An opposition coalition and the BDP's biggest challenger. Boko proposes increasing the government's role in the economy. Boko's party challenged the last election as fraudulent at the High Court, which dismissed the case. And lastly, Domelang Salishando, the 53-year-old, is the leader of the Botswana Congress Party, the BCP, and he describes the party as one of having social democratic principles and is campaigning with the motto, Save Botswana. And this brings us to the key issues in the Botswana elections. First is economy. Botswana is heavily dependent on diamond production for its economy. Yeah. The country is Africa's largest and the world's second largest diamond producer. But in recent years, it has experienced decreased revenue for its diamonds because of a downturn in demand. While mining revenues drive economic growth, they keep fluctuating. 
So despite all of the diamond wealth, Botswana has a wide disparity between rich and poor. The country is also facing rising unemployment. Overall unemployment has exceeded 27% and the youth unemployment has surpassed 45%. Government employees have been receiving delayed salaries as a result of the tight financial position. It's not just finance, but climate change is also impacting Botswana. The country faces frequent floods and drought, which has threatened its agricultural production and has caused food insecurity. Drought and desertification has risked the livelihoods of many residents. Now, with these issues, the opposition has been gaining popularity in Botswana. Even though the country for years has been stable, the upcoming polls amid the economic challenges could be a crucial test for the Southern African nation. First post. She says something about, let me see, floods and droughts. It has surpassed 45%. Government employees have been receiving delayed salaries as a result of the tight financial position. It's not just finance, but climate change is also impacting Botswana. The country faces frequent floods and drought, which has threatened its agricultural production and has caused food insecurity. Uh, so during the campaign, okay, she's drought and uh, floods. Um, yeah, I, I mean, drought, obviously, Botswana is a very dry area so if you are like somebody who wants to do business with uh like farming and just know that you're going to have to deal with the water shortages uh especially ray if you are depending on rain for your farming so you just have to like figure out a way to to dig your borehole or, or, or something build a dam <laughs> so i think Botswana could use a little bit of flood like uh there's been like minor floods here and there but like floods in Botswana I think they will be very useful uh, obviously not extreme ones but I think it, it doesn't rain as much in Botswana nowadays it's just it's just too dry like it takes longer to rain uh, and then when it rains when it rains it's almost like winter time so it's always kind of tricky to having to deal with that if, especially for farmers I know this because I am a farmer when I go to Botswana and I'm always making sure that I know about all these things and hopefully one day I'll go back to Botswana and be a farmer <laughs> if my wife was here she would anyway yeah uh, that's it about the international news so uh, I think if you're traveling to Botswana just know that the elections are happening uh, tomorrow and uh, it will be over uh, so one thing that I also like about Botswana politics is that uh, when when uh, when the political uh, kind of thing is over and the person determined and sewn in, then the political thing side of things just like go quiet, and now you just focus on the government. Unlike in America, where uh, if if Trump wins or Kamala wins, then the Republicans will still be continue to like challenge and say all this other negative stuff without like just focusing on moving the country forward um but this is america this is how things run and maybe that's why this country is as great as it is you know how like people are every day are held accountable so thank you so much for watching this i do hope that this is not like a turn down for you to want to visit botswana but uh, as a visitor just know that it's gonna be a little bit of that but you are free to go uh there's nothing that is going to happen to you and uh yeah so coffee la la ra kopana ga bomana go ngetla go siyabe salansen